News from OpenAI's Sora, the artificial intelligence that promises to revolutionize the global video market, is causing a stir, exciting many and terrifying others. Have you ever wondered how far technology can go in content creation and how it can transform your creative lives? We are going to delve into the latest updates from the intriguing advancements of the Sora project and take a trip into the virtual world of the Trust Scout, where the lines between reality and fiction blur increasingly. Before we proceed, remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video to stay updated. Agreed? Thanks for the support. Moving on. There has been much talk about Sora even with some slightly unrealistic expectations, I would say. The latest scoop is an interview with Mira Murati, the CTO of OpenAI, where she discusses when Sora might be released. I have some questions about this, and we're going to discuss it in the video, plus some interesting details about Sora that I haven't seen mentioned anywhere else. Remember the episodes of South Park created by artificial intelligence a few months ago? Well, the technology behind that is starting to be made available and I'm going to show how you can gain access. Starting with Sora in a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, Mira Murati answered some questions on the topic and provided some very interesting details. But things get more intriguing when we compare her responses in the Wall Street Journal with an interview given by Sora's technical leaders just five days earlier. Let's take a closer look at this, but first let's talk about the interview of Marathi with the Wall Street Journal, which had its moments of tension, which is understandable since the AI is being sued by the New York Times over copyright issues. One of the highlights was the showing of new Sora videos, including including a Pixar-style animation of a bull in a china shop, which was really interesting. They mentioned that the bull was supposed to cause more damage in the shop, but it's okay. Another scene showed a video production company in New York with a high-quality film camera when a robot snatches the camera from her hands. The outcome was the reporter doing a weird dance turning into the robot and holding the most unusual camera I've ever seen. I have to admit, I would like to test that camera despite its strange look with two lenses in the front and one on the side. We also saw convincing videos of two women giving an interview with some finger issues on one of them, but that was to be expected. Otherwise, the quality was very good and there was even a generic aerial criticizing a smartphone. Interestingly, the videos were in standard or 720p quality and were about 20 seconds long. Mira Murati says the videos were generated quickly, only taking a few minutes. This is surprising since reports suggest it would take anywhere from 30 minutes to one and a half hours to generate 20 second videos on Sora. One standout moment in the interview was when Mira Murati was questioned about the training data used for Sora. She stated that public or licensed data was used. But when pressed on the inclusion of Facebook videos, Mira Murati couldn't provide a concrete answer, avoiding giving further details. After the interview, possibly after consulting with lawyers, she revealed that Sora was trained on data from Shutterstock, which OpenAI has a partnership with. It was peculiar that this information wasn't shared sooner as this has been public knowledge since at least July 11th, 2023. As for the release of Sora, we can only wait and see. Mira Murati noted that considering the processing power and the associated costs, they still don't know what Sora will look like when it eventually launches. I personally speculate that perhaps no videos will be generated of with one minute runtime in Sora, but something more in the range of four to ten seconds, similar to the video generators we have access to today. But the question everyone wants to know is when will Sora be released? Murat replied that possibly later this year, perhaps in the next few months. But I have my doubts mainly about the time frame of a few months because just five days before Marx Browning interviewed on YouTube the leaders of OpenAI's Sora project on his podcast and when asked about the launch, 
They said that there was no forecast and that it would not be anytime soon. It seems strange to me that in five days we have gone from being unforeseen to in the next few months, especially considering all the technical and security challenges that need to be overcome before launch. In addition, there is a race in the industry with investments in Chinese AI startups to compete with Sora. Last week, Pixverse and iSphere each received millions of dollars to catch up with OpenAI. Murat also mentioned in the Wall Street Journal interview that Sora will eventually have sound while the team said they were considering this. Bill Pipple mentioned that it's hard to give exact timelines for these kinds of things and that in the first version of Sora, the focus was really on improving video generation model capabilities. It's curious that he referred to this as Sora 1. This might suggest that they're already working on Sora 2. In Mark's interview, the team was also asked about the data that Sora was trained on and gave a vague answer. But they did mention that it was trained like Dolly. However, it is more similar to the GPT family, which strengthens speculations. And research suggests that Sora was built on a diffusion transformation. Despite it all, both Murat and the team expressed curiosity to see how artists will use Sora, focusing less on producing finished films, but more on what it will eventually look like used in new and unique ways that even they couldn't predict. If you want to create something, don't wait for Sora, start now. First, because I really don't think Sora is going to do what you expect, at least not right away. So my suggestion is to use the tools we already have available. There's Hyper, which is free, and I've mentioned in other videos, about those episodes of AI-generated South Park that circulated a few months ago. They were created by a company named Simulation, which is also Fable Studios. Since then, they have worked on several other projects, including Sim Francisco, a virtual city full of AI-powered citizens who live their lives, work, sleep, fall in love, and even die. They're also working on the Triss Guild, basically the Wild West. But with all this tech, it's got some pretty strong Westworld vibes. Although it doesn't look very cinematic for now, what's going on underneath is quite interesting. There's a murder in Triss Guild, and we're following a sheriff who's investigating. The sheriff is an AI agent with the goal of solving the murder, but he also has a backstory, just like all the other characters in town all driven by the saga, a generative agency of action for skills. You're faced with interactive choices for your characters, but they can also make decisions on their own. It has an interesting look, kind of like Borderlands. Borderlands says its platform is made for AI creators, researchers, and enthusiasts offering unprecedented control over storytelling and character interactions through a strong Python API, enabling deep customization of processes of decision making and generation of AI conversations. Fable has also released the saga as open source, so if you want to play around with the code, you can now do so. And look, I'm not going to talk about that today, but Fugur1 recently released a video showing how the robot can connect to ChatGP. Maybe we're not so far from a real life Westworld. I just hope we've learned the lesson of not shooting at the robots, because at the end of the day, they can fight back. Leave your ideas and questions in the comments. I'd love to talk about the subjects of the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.